friends upsc mains exam is 80 days away and congrats to all the students who cleared upsc prelims however those students who fail in upsc prelims don't worry start preparing for mains examination even if you have write prelims once again next year do not start preparing for prelims now this 3 to 4 months is a main season though you failed in the prelims my advice is you prepare for the mains examination for next 4 to 5 months only from december again you can start preparing for the prelims exam now those students who cleared the prelims examination really it is a privilege because these days even those who got a rank in upsc are failing in the prelims the next year so if you have created the prelims consider it as a privilege and make use of the next three months effectively to clear the examination because there is no point of clearing only prelims you have to clear the entire examination and get a rank so friends in the next 80 days as upsc mains is on sep september 16th so you have almost like 80 days so obviously all of you know the test series is very important but how shall you make use of test series i have seen personally many students taking the test series but unable to make use of it completely very few students know how to use the test series properly and you know using that one they improve their scores exam by exam towards the end when they write the mains examination they will not do any mistakes that they have done during test series now friends the first thing as i tell every year after clearing prelims generally we celebrate for a few days we enjoy the moment but don't celebrate too long because this is not the final examination it's just the first leg in the process so start writing test series come out of your comfort zone what do you mean by comfort zone friends i observed that many students do not like to sit for three hours and write the examination for example they take question paper they sit for one hour write few questions next day some one hour Sometimes they write only some parts of questions and some students will only brainstorm the questions they do not like to sit down write for 3 hours. They feel it painful to write the mains, full mains exam now but my suggestion is start writing at least after 2 weeks. Take maximum 2 weeks time to prepare some basics and start writing the mains examination like just like the real examination. Just like the real examination feel it like that. For example some candidates what they do is they sit for the test series sit for 3 hours but they do not take it seriously they write some questions properly they do not finish the paper i mean they consider it just as a practice session but my advice is consider every exam in test series like real examination write it sincerely only then you can actually simulate the real examination friends as i told you maximum till july 10th you can stay without writing any examination these 15 days these two weeks you can just revise the important topics for the mains and whatever topics you have already prepared for the prelims no need to focus much whatever topics you haven't touched for the prelims like internal security disaster management society of india world history you can start reading and also spend at least 50 percent of your time in the optional and after two weeks start writing some or the other exam now friends i would tell you that just writing the examination is not enough you require a personalized evaluation for example you write an exam and somebody just evaluates their paper and if they just add the points for example for some question on governor discretionary force of governor let's say you wrote some seven points and somebody the evaluator will just tell that you have to add these three points or these four points if he makes your 7 points into 10 points then that is not the real evaluation because even if you see the model answer or search in the google you can definitely get more points the evaluation should be personalized in the sense the evaluator should spend some time identify the problem in your answer unique to you every candidate has a specific problem in writing the answer some people are poor in the introductions some are poor in the conclusions some are poor in the facts I mean it's very personalized. So whatever test series you write, ensure that the evaluator spends some time on your paper, specifically identifies your strength, your weakness and suggests the modifications. See friends, 
you, have, you should also get the evaluated copy within few days for example maximum four days or five days if you write an examination and you get the evaluation after 10 days or 15 days then there's no point of writing test series because once you write the answer the answers when they are fresh in your mind next four or five days if you get the evaluation then actually you can improve upon your mistakes then the next examination second exam you can do well see as i told you instead of adding points to your answer as i have seen some of the evaluators what they do is they will just tell you that you missed so and so point you have to add this point just they will add the information such kind of evaluation is not required for you you already cleared the prelims you have enough knowledge you can add points by yourself what they have to see is for example i observed that some students cannot write a short introduction if they start introduction half page they will write only introduction that is their weakness so we have to spend time for them tell them how they can reduce the introduction if possible show them the copies papers of other uh, you know students who are writing a better introduction you know in a few words similarly some students are actually poor in presenting more points what they'll do is they'll write two end of page answer but they'll write only four points so for such students we will be telling them how to concise each point and write more points in less space generally what happens is some students they'll write only one and a half page answer one and a half page but 10 points will be there some students write two and a half page answer but only four points will be there so that that is a weakness of some students so the idea is that your answers can be short but crisp and more points should be there whereas some students these days i'm observing specifically this is a very important thing some students are thinking that if they draw two minute diagrams they'll get more marks it's really a big mistake that you are going to do don't draw diagrams for everything only draw diagram when in less space you can represent more points more dimensions only then draw diagram don't think that in your paper diagrams are there automatically get more marks nothing like this for example i have observed recently also one student in the yesterday's uh, test series paper one of our students the question was what are the constraints india is facing in achieving 5 trillion dollar economy in the next few years the question was analyze the constraints what are the various constraints analyze the constraints so you have to take each constraint analyze it for example if you feel infrastructure is a constraint explain few sentences about that if you feel unemployment is a major constraint unemployment is a major constraint write about it if you think that policy is a major constraint write about it but what he has done is he just started for example constraints infrastructure policy means they just feel that if they draw a circle draw arrows automatically evaluator will think that they are creative nothing like their friends this is not creative just drawing diagram for sake of drawing do not do it that is a problem some people such people shall be told that you should not do this like that each student some students are poor in this some students are poor in this some students do this kind of uh, wrong things for example some students do not draw diagram at all sometimes when maps are required flow charts are required they do not know for such students while evaluating we will be adding points you have to add points let's see this is a place where most of the candidates can draw a diagram this is a place where you can draw a map like that this is what i call as personalized evaluation so every student requires changes in their style of answer writing so such kind of thing is very important only when your test series evaluators are doing that go ahead with just say this if they are not doing this kind of evaluation if they're just giving you information adding information there's no point of writing test series friends also you have to get model answers for example if you wrote some 20 exams each exam 20 questions 400 questions if you write and if you get good model answers for all 400 questions if you just you know revise go through those model answers in itself you are prepared for the mains because most of the questions will be repeating in the actual mains examination okay now friends this is something i want to tell you because in the last few years most of our students who have taken test series with us our team of evaluators when they evaluate they end up mistakes for example let us say this is a student in her first examination she is poor in drawing the maps diagrams 
so we tell the feedback next exam she improves it but still she is poor in writing the points concisely she takes time to improve them then the fourth exam fifth exam we find we find that her answers are not multidimensional we will try to put that the slowly eighth exam ninth exam we find that means she will be rectifying the mistakes one after another gradually by the time she finishes all 20 exams she is perfectly fine and the actual mains exam she will not do any of those mistakes basically you should not repeat the mistakes that means during the test series when the evaluator evaluates the paper that is the time when you can actually experiment trial and error in the test series you can try different methods of answer writing and when we evaluate them we will make changes accordingly so after trying so many things finally you keep on rectifying the mistakes and then come to the stage where you write the perfect answers you know that takes time if you never write a series you never get scope to make mistakes and rectify mistakes that's why i am telling write a series in test series write with your free will you can write in different styles there is a place where you can make all possible mistakes and get them rectified friends also one very important thing i want to tell you see whatever test series you are taking ensure that the question papers of that test series are like real upsc exam see in upsc exam all 20 questions are not difficult some questions are difficult some are very specific some are very broad some questions are very vague in fact so it's a combination of all those things if somebody is giving you question paper where all 20 questions are very difficult just to prove their standards do not take such kind of exams you should have a combination of vague questions difficult easy everything also some papers are highly current affairs oriented and they feel most of the questions are current affairs but nothing like that some of the questions test your fundamental concepts it should be a combination of static and dynamic so ensure that the test series you are taking have these qualities of the real upsc paper and that year's issues what would happen in that year or last one and a half year most of the issues shall be covered in the test series if you after taking test series in the process of writing three four exams if you realize that the question papers are not like that i'm suggesting you leave the series go for some other test series there's no problem in that because if you continue writing the test series where questions are not like upsc you you are actually not getting trained in writing those kind of answers also the way of questioning in upsc as you know you can see last five years papers the questions actually test broad concepts narrow specific concepts testing questions are very limited in fact so ensure that question paper is in this way friends generally of course i know those students who wrote the mains in the last two three years they generally prefer to write only full exams for example in our academy also see even we are conducting 2022 mains test series there there are 23 exams test series and we have 10 exams test series in 10 exams test series only full exams will be there sa gs 1 2 3 4 in 23 exams test series we have 13 subject wise exams and 10 full exams so why do we keep the subject wise exams and why do i specifically encourage writing subject with exams because one thing is this week you prepare economy you write economy exam next week geography geog and then write geography exam in that way you can finish the syllabus in next 60 days and then write full exams is one thing second thing is when you write subject wise exams what happens is let us say you write an exam only for economy the paper is evaluated by economy expert evaluator economy faculty so he can suggest you changes specific to economy similarly if you write only polity exam polity faculty can evaluate and is an expert of polity he can suggest to change accordingly the advantage is there so there will be expert evaluator for every subject one more thing is you can finish the syllabus one week internal security one week science technology and disaster management one week environment you can finish the syllabus in that way also friend remember there is a unique approach for every subject for example when i evaluate the paper i look for certain things in economy for example if it is an economy answer i look for certain reports statistics certain facts data dumping of certain you know reports or facts whatever but when i look into polity in polity we look for whether to write some important articles constitution of india important judgments important policies laws acts also 
in polity we look for elaborating are you elaborating a point explaining it nicely in economy we look for crisp points just to the point just write the main point leave it and move on so several points every point is only short whereas polity limited points and every point more elaborate so it's different for example in geography we look for the keywords and drawing of maps so like that every subject has certain way of approaching it in that way if you approach it you get more marks so that possibility will be there if you write subject wise exams also even in our academy also in our test series also subject wise exams are actually evaluated by subject experts of course expert of one subject can, can evaluate uh, any paper gs 1 2 3 4 but for that subject he will be coming whereas if you write full exams gs 1 2 3 4 one faculty evaluates enter gs1 though he is good in one subject we will make him well enter paper in that way i suggest you to write subject wise exams also then friends generally you no need to be topper of every subject you should have more than average knowledge of writing all the subjects but in one or two subjects if you score high marks and average marks in all subjects high marks in one or two subjects will get you into the uh, civil service final list friends see in test series the evaluator or even when you write test series when you write test series or when evaluate revaluates your paper we have to look into subtle things never think that you should have more information on a question to get more marks having more information is not really required to get more marks because you see some students in their first attempt they get very good marks in mains some students in their sixth attempt also get less marks in mains but a student of sixth attempt will have more knowledge a student of sixth attempt definitely have double the knowledge of student having first attempt so the point is there are some subtle things you have to find out the evaluate for example even in our test series also we actually train the evaluators to look for these subtle things now i am going to tell you some of those subtle things you have to see subtle things you have to see so that you actually focus on them while writing your test series friends one is the most important thing which i observed many students do not follow is understanding the demand of question addressing the question exactly like what they asked for example see in 2021 one of the questions was investment in infrastructure essential for rapid and inclusive economic growth discuss in the light of india's experience so most of the students what they do is investment in infrastructure made be railways roadways whatever in uh, is power stations or housing or construction of dams airports whatever so investment in infrastructure they will explain how it helps in the overall economic development of india so obviously they are addressing investment infrastructure how it helps the economic growth they write about various aspects how each of the each of the infrastructural elements help in the economic growth of india they will write but the question is rapid and inclusive so though you write 20 points all 20 points may not be really giving you marks only those points which include inclusive economic growth that means you have to mention how it actually helped in the improvement of you know vulnerable sections women uh, you know scs histories or minorities or physical disabled children old people means inclusive tribal development so your your focus should be on that and also rapid rapid growth that means the gdp growth should be rapid because of investment infrastructure so you have to address those two very few students exactly address these two words all remaining students only generally write the investment how it helps in the economic development overall that's why i'm telling you you should know the demand of the question so this is what you have to practice in test series uh, read every question take some time try to understand the demand of the question exactly address it and you, as evaluators we also have to give marks for that in fact then friends see this is another thing every student knows that knows that new psc means every question will have some two sub parts or three sub parts or four sub parts everybody knows that they have to address them but what happens in the actual examination let us say there are four within a question four parts are there naturally let us say you are strong in these two parts automatically you spend more space for these two neglect these two 
So these two parts, you write the entire question. Excellent points you'll write, but still you'll get only 50% of the mocks. 50% of the maximum mocks, let us say. 50% of the mocks. But those students who write all four aspects average, every aspect to write average, 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 you get good mocks. These two excellent, these two you don't address, you get less mocks. So that is the point. For example, see, in 2020, General Studies 3, one question was, COVID-19 pandemic has caused unprecedented devastation in world, worldwide. This is the first part of the question. Of course, not the question is a statement, but still, it is a first statement. That statement you have to differently justify by writing at least three, four lines. You tell that yes, COVID-19 pandemic has caused these many uh, deaths, I mean loss of life, this much loss of property, and standstill of the uh, industries or economy, this much fall in the GDP of many countries, whatever. You just write three, four lines justifying how COVID-19 pandemic caused unprecedented devastation worldwide, economically, socially, whatever. Okay. Then come to second part. However, technological advancements are being availed readily to win over the crisis. So write about what are those technological tools that have come into the play during COVID. For example, you can write about vaccination, about drug delivery, about oxygen supply, about tracking of the COVID cases. I mean, all wherever you use technology, you can read all those things. Then third, give an account of how technology was sought to aid management of pandemic. Not only COVID, general pandemic in general. So yeah, you can write about how technology was sought to aid, how you can use technology in database management, in lockdown, in restricting, other based understanding, other based you know, uh, identification of where risk areas are there. Means you can talk about technology overall, biotechnology, you can talk about pharmaceutical technology, you can talk about then all this. So uh, each part of the question shall be separately addressed. There are mocks for that. You have to practice that. In test series, your idea is to practice these kind of subtle things, subtle things, not just, you know, dumping the information. And as evaluators, even we train all evaluators to evaluate on these lines. For example, friends, introduction as well as conclusion are very important. See, introduction conclusion you should not write just because you have to write. Through introduction conclusion, auto, you have to show your maturity, show your ability. Uh, you, have to, you should try to score more. For example, uh, General Studies 2, last, before your paper, Indian diaspora has a important role to play in the politics and economy of uh, you know these countries, uh, American European countries. Now you have to comment. Now you cannot directly start directly the impact of diaspora on the economy of America is you know multinational companies, startup companies. You cannot start doing that because this is about diaspora. You should have a very relevant introduction. The introduction should make the evaluator think that yes, this guy knows about Indian diaspora's overall role, and then he's coming to America and European countries. So you have to say Indian diaspora, sir, persons of Indian origin, or you can say non-resident Indians spread across the world and they had wide impact not only development of India but de development of several countries worldwide and general share of the Indian diaspora is this much in European countries in America, in West Asia like that. So you give a four to five lines introduction where you give a very good picture of overall Indian diaspora, who are they, what is their contribution to the global economy then you come to America and European countries that actually gives you more marks. So introduction actually takes introduction should show the evaluator that I have as a student I have good knowledge on the subject then come to the point so they actually give mocks to, to the candidates whom they feel have wide knowledge introduction conclusion are the only two places where you can show that knowledge in the actual answer you cannot show in the actual answer you have to stick to the point so like that we will be actually giving feedback while evaluating we give feedback on to students about introduction also. Similarly, as I told you about GS3, you should know what, for example, many students will ask me, sir, what facts can I use? What data can I use? Frankly, friends, only few, things, for example, learn about Niti Aayog, sustainable development goals. Use them for every answer in general studies 3. Understand, for example, ARC report is there. Use it for every answer in GS2. Very limited reports, you learn limited facts, use it across the answers. That skill you have to develop through test series and even the evaluator will be telling you in this answer you can use this one, you can use this one. So you should have some fodder points, value add points which you can add anywhere. 
that you have to develop only those students who develop this habit score very high marks in general studies for example what is cryptocurrency direct definition generally everybody write the definition how does it affect global society everybody writes the exact answer but while writing this answer value addition actually increases our marks for example you can tell about india about india how in 2018 rbi rbi actually banned trade in cryptocurrencies and even 2019 also inter ministerial committee also came up with the banning but in 2020 the years are not actually very important but you can say in the last few years in 2020 also supreme court struck down the ban struck down the ban on the cryptocurrencies hence reserve bank of india now is talking about a central digital currency even we have a act a cryptocurrency and official uh, digital currencies act uh, 2021 so you have to write these kind of facts without writing any of this kind of uh, uh, reports facts or whatever directly for define and write the effect you may get half or one mark less so to get half mark more one mark more you have to add certain facts and examples so these kind of things is also called as a good evaluation according to me you have to learn these things you have to learn how to forcefully use all these things in the answer for example creativity see creativity specifically cannot be trained but wherever you are creative in your answers we will encourage you for example you wrote, you wrote an answer same answer another person writes you see his answer or his or her answer you see how they are creative in some areas for example in one of our uh, uh, test series recently one student about the migration about my for example question about migration then a small map for example just the africa and you know this is a small map they will draw australia say you know south america north america greenland simply they will say that from india to africa farmers india to west asia you know blue collar jobs india to australia higher education see india to russia doctors india to you know uh, north america white collar jobs software engineers india to south america entrepreneurs for india to singapore like that so they draw the arrow to every country and mention simply within a single diagram they represent lot of things so creativity basically creativity so these kind of things you have to learn to test series in the model answers nobody will give those things you have to just as you write the exams get them evaluated your evaluator will tell some points based on that you have to show how you can write unique answers uniqueness is a point here anybody whose answer is unique generally gets more marks at least half mark more than the remaining students friends half mark in every question will add 10 marks per paper and 40 marks per exam per overall means general studies also friends as i told you again already if i finish this point these days i am seeing students write drawing too many diagrams but getting very less marks do not draw diagram everywhere just like you know don't draw this kind of diagrams everywhere you get less marks uh, i already told you about this in our test series i have seen many students doing this that's why friends last last thing i want to tell you see conclusion shall be generally optimistic optimism is a very important thing of course it should be relevant to the topic but optimistic for example see a uh, gs2 question before here indian constitution exhibits centralizing tendencies means to maintain the unity particularly particularly in cases like diseases disaster management you know and even the farm act also it is centralizing so so the question may be negative in nature but in the conclusion you have to mention that india though it is a quasi federal or federal federal in nature centralizing tendency is important in specific cases where all states should act in unison where states should not you know uh, do things which will break that unity the integration should not be broken so in that way central tendency is a positive aspect of india particularly to this kind of address in this kind of issues like that you have tried a very optimistic conclusion you cannot say that uh, Uh, central tendency is again as the federal nature of india not required in the conclusion conclusion be optimistic friends see in our upsc mains test series that we are conducting next 80 days as i told you we have 23 exams either you can write 23 exams or you can write only 10 full exams 30 subject wise and 10 full exams will be there and one thing we have ensured is that anybody in the evalu our evaluators for example the evaluator who is evaluated ethics paper is the highest scorer in his mains ethics 
he might have missed the rank by few marks maybe he scored less in the interview or optional but ethics he scored consistently very high marks such kind of people i have kept in the ethics evaluation similarly gs3 evaluation i kept a person who scores very high in the gs3 so we ensured our evaluators are toppers in that particular paper also we have trained the evaluators to look into the subtle topics because as i observed the general evaluators what they do is they'll have model answer in the hand they'll see the student's answer they just add some points you forgot this point you forgot this point in that way that will not help so we train them in evaluating specifically in subtle areas and they spend more time on each paper for personalized feedback and after the evaluation student can connect with the faculty online on phone or offline to clear the doubts that is about our test series well friends all the best whatever test series you take please ensure that you are using all these ideas please ensure that while writing answers you focus on these seven areas ensure that every exam after writing go through the model answers like material also ensure that every exam you write for 3 hours sincerely just like the real examination and try different methods of writing examination make all possible mistakes only in test series and get them rectified only then in the mains examination you can do very well all the best friends do well take care bye